and to visit the graveyards. Why? Because the graveyards remind us that this life is short and that the hereafter is the most important. So a man came and said, Ya Rasulullah, when is the last hour going to come? The Prophet ﷺ said, don't ask about that. What have you prepared for it? So the hereafter is what we are preparing for. Visiting the sick and visiting the ill reminds us of the blessing that Allah has given us. We see when we visit the blind person, we remember that Allah has given us eyesight. When we visit a deaf person, we remember that Allah has given us hearing. When we visit a crippled person, remember that Allah has given us legs. The world is yours. You can do anything you like. Anything you like. But this poor crippled person, imagine what they were going through. I have three friends in Melbourne at the moment. They are three, three of them, wallahi, are extremely strong and young people. One of them is 23, the other is 32, and the other one is 31 years old. They have everything in the world, alhamdulillah. Their youth, their health, their wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicted them with a harm. Three of them were stricken with cancer. One of them leukemia, the 23 year old. The second one, a rare type of leukemia. And the third one was also leukemia. The first one who got leukemia, when he was 18 years old, he found out that he had leukemia when he was 18. He wasn't religious at that time. And he told me this. He said he went home and started to cry and wail and say, what have I done? Why did I deserve this? Why, why, why? He began to have doubt about his own faith. He said a few months later, I went back to the doctor and it was all gone. It was all gone. But he was almost about to do kufr and he was gone so after that he actually became thankful to Allah he started worshipping and became more religious he even grew his beard and he became one of those who became very knowledgeable in the religion alhamdulillah and made da'wah to his family I think over 20 members of his friends also became better Muslims and one Girl, over the internet, he gave a da'wah and she became a Muslim as well. At the age of 22, he felt ill again. And leukemia came back into his body. It's in Allah's wisdom why this happened. But look at his state now. He said, brother, now I've got leukemia. But he is now thankful to Allah. He still worships Allah. He asked me, should I shave my beard? I said... Be patient, brother. Just keep it, even if it's one last hair. He kept it. And he went through a great struggle, my dear brothers and sisters, for eight months under chemotherapy. It's unimaginable what kind of pain they go through, ya yeah, And he takes out all the all their white cells that that, 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 that that protect them from all the bacteria and viruses. That if he got a cold, a flu, he'll die from it if he doesn't go to the hospital within about five or six hours. He went through that. One time, the, he, one of his uh, hoses that go into his heart, he has to keep it 24-7. It, it, it became loose and blood started to pour. He fainted and he was taken to emergency to hospital, an emergency, and he thought he was going to die. Then he woke up and they said, if you, weren't here half an hour, uh, if you were here half an hour late, you would have been dead. And on and on. Then, alhamdulillah, they found a donor for him. And he did a, a, a transplant of the other person's uh, blood ma marrow. Alhamdulillah, it worked out. But still till now, he is one day at home, five days in hospital. Because it takes time for it to take, to, to, for his body to accept it. The other day he attracted an infection. He had to be in hospital for five days and five nights. It was very bad. We thought he was going to go, that's it. I went to visit him brothers and sisters, wallahi, the state I saw him in. He couldn't speak because of the side effects. Inside of his mouth, he was full of, well, I'm not exaggerating, probably 50 ulcers and pimples inside of his mouth and on his tongue and at the back. He couldn't eat, he couldn't drink from it. They had to put it through his nose and through his blood. 
and he's still going through it. He needs about a year to see whether his body accepts it or rejects it. Yet wallahi, I have never seen a person like him in that situation who is closer to Allah than he has ever was. The second person, 32 years old, also attracted this rare type of leukemia. I went and visited him the other day. He has probably about, maybe if you count them, 300 hairs left on his, on his beard from the chemotherapy. He was also admitted into the cancer institution, institute or the cancer hospital because he had attracted a tiny virus which caused inflammation in his liver and if he hadn't been there five hours later he would have been dead he is receiving a treatment worth three hundred thousand dollars he said to me I, I visited him he said it was a Friday evening and, he, and I had a, a little speech at the Preston Masjid my usual Friday talks I said what would you like me to say to the people he said brother you could barely talk of course he said brother tell the people to thank Allah for the blessings that they have their health and what he was trying to say was also in this country and I have to say it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to be here in Australia yeah, yeah, besides all the ne other negativities at least this he said if I was back he's a Turkish brother he said if I was back in Turkey brother I couldn't afford this treatment it's a $300,000 treatment the government's paying for it I would have been dead by now I said to him it's the same in Lebanon you could be in a critical condition. If you can't pay, they'll leave you outside until you die. He said, it is Allah who put them here. It's not the Australian government, it's Allah. So I told them to thank Allah for what they have and stop whining. The third brother, he was a revert to Islam. Lebanese, used to be Christian and converted to Islam. Married a beautiful, a good sister. And he became very wealthy. Allah gave him lots of wealth, ya akhwan. Lots of wealth. In fact, one day he came up to me and said, Brother, I have $60,000 sitting aside. If you want, I can lend them to you and just pay me them in after 10 years if you like. Or if you know anybody, I'll lend them. Such a beautiful heart. One day he came to the masjid and, and hugged me after a while and he said, Brother, I've got cancer. Leukemia. The cancer went away and then came back. And then for about two years I couldn't see him. In hospital. And finally they found a donor for him and he got the bone marrow transplant he had to stay in his house from memory 11 months he wasn't allowed to leave his bedroom because if he did he didn't have enough of his white blood cells to protect him against any virus or bacteria he died within five hours subhanallah you would think that he would move away from Allah but subhanallah the other day his parents came in and he kept on giving them da'wah for about three hours, constantly saying to them, Mom, Dad, if you don't become Muslim now, I will die a sad man. I don't want to leave this world knowing that you have disbelieved in Allah. I want you to be with me in Jannah, if you want to make me happy. And he doesn't care that he's going to leave the world. But the only thing that makes him happy is that his parents embrace Islam. So the parents said something and he went unconscious. The next day they brought the priest and he started throwing holy water on them, baptizing them again. He said, in case they, because they you see, they did kufr in other words, in case they made kufr, they went into Islam. So he started baptizing them, make sure that everybody's still a Christian. I applaud these brothers and I got a really great lesson from them. I don't know if I can be the same if I was in their position, wallahi. Allahu a'lam. Brothers and sisters in Islam, inshallah, I'll wrap it down with this final story. Uh, there was a young girl in Sri Lanka, young Anissa, who was only five years old. And we were trying to gather some money for her, for a treatment. And there are many like her. They brought us some photos of her. Young Anissa, she was born with her large intestine outside of her body. And it was outside. And this young girl, Anissa, grew up and she looks healthy, you know, she plays and everything, but her internal organs are outside and part of her liver is also outside of her body. And she's trying to get treatment, but in India they couldn't and they, and, and they sort of had like a little net over it sort of thing. Subhanallah, the Royal Children's Hospital here wanted to sort of bring her down and give her this treatment. But she passed away before she could come. Young Anissa, five years old. Her parents obviously felt grief, 
But let us thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given us healthy children, ourselves. How many children are born with problems in them and their parents go through grief? Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what He has given you. The other day I visited a brother, young, healthy, wallahi al-azim, 20-something years old. Good swimmer, excellent swimmer. He dived off the platform, ended up in hospital completely paralyzed. Wallahi, we went and visited him. He said, brother, wallahi, I don't know how I became paralyzed. I just dived and then suddenly I, I just found myself, I couldn't, I couldn't twist over. My, my, I was face down and I can't breathe. I'm going to twist over. And I couldn't. I couldn't feel my body. People noticed and they brought him to hospital. He's trying to move his limbs like this. You should see him, subhanAllah, like a, like a doll, like a puppet. And subhanAllah is coming nearer to Allah. And it's something amazing. I thank Allah for every, I thank Allah that I can, for every moment that Allah subhanahu wa has given me to feel each fingertip that I have, each nail that I have. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, never look at those who are less fortunate than you. Always look at those, sorry, never look at those who are more fortunate than you in life. Look at those who are less fortunate than you in life. This is better for you, he said, Allah tazdaru ni'matullah, so that you will not be ungrateful for what Allah has already blessed you.